this is a degradable bag. You can tell, look, 100% degradable. This is also degradable. But what is the difference? This one is greenwashing. In fact, to my mind, more than greenwashing, this should be a criminal offence. Seriously, I am probably more degradable than this degradable plastic bag. After roughly 10 years after death, left out in the wilderness or buried, actually I want to be a tree, but that's another story. But anyway, after about 10 years, apart from my bones, there will be nothing left and eventually I will biodegrade. Whereas this bag, this bag, well nobody has actually lived long enough to know whether this bag will ever ever biodegrade. To biodegrade, something needs to be able to, what's the word in? Something needs to be able to disintegrate, decompose by the action of microorganisms, biological, with or without oxygen, while getting assimilated into the natural environment. This will never do that. So I'll get into that in a little bit more detail in a moment. But if you don't have time to watch the entire video just now, why not subscribe to my channel and check back later. Oh, and don't forget to hammer the like button and stick around for Ask Angus at the end of this video where I answer your questions directly. We all now know that single use petroleum based plastic is shit and that we shouldn't use it. And many of us are trying to do the right thing by choosing degradable, biodegradable, or compostable bags. The truth is there is only one answer here, and that is to take your own bag shopping. It's not even difficult. So, this is a degradable bag and the go-to choice for planet-loving folk all over the world and indeed my local greengrocer who has purchased these thinking he's doing the right thing. He is not and if you're using these, you are not. <laughs> Let me explain using Gerald. Gerald, my little plastic rodent and companion of many years. If Gerald was a real mouse, Sorry, Gerald. Sorry, Gerald. I've been meaning to tell you for years. Anyway, if Gerald was a real mouse, his life expectancy, assuming he lived with me and was cared for, would probably be uh, two years. In the wild, it would be something between 12 to 18 months. After that, decom decomposition is quick for a mouse at about three weeks. But anyway, Gerald. I don't know why I call him Gerald, and I don't recall where I got Gerald from originally, but Gerald used to have the most magnificent nose, I mean really, that at some point broke off. So Gerald has already started to degrade, and Gerald will degrade further, possibly losing a foot, uh, maybe this bit of cheese here, I don't know. And, and over a few hundred years, or possibly thousands of years, Gerald will become microplastics, that is to say that he will no longer be recognisable as Gerald, but he will still be with us in our food system, in the food system of our future generations, if we survive that long. And so it is with this bag. Whilst it may take more than two years to break down as being unrecognisable as a bag, it, as the bag it is today, the microplastics will be a gift to the food chain of future generations. Oh, and it gets worse. If you have one of these well-meaning bags, how do you dispose of it? Well, the short answer according to the seller is the bag can be recycled with other polythene bags. Provided it's disposed of before it begins to degrade. However, if it's already started to, to degrade, then it's no longer suitable for recycling and it has to be disposed of in the bin for incinerating or landfill. How do you dispose of yours? Has anyone actually tried 
to home compost this. I would love to know. I'd love to know if somebody's got one of these and has tried to home compost it. How did you get on? The bottom line here is that unless it shows suitable for home composting, it is probably not. But in the meantime, the answer here is to take your own bag. Like this one. I would not, I wouldn't dream of going out grocery shopping without taking my wallet, at the moment my mask and a bag to carry everything home in, and you shouldn't either. I should probably talk about bags for life, which actually I will do a future video on. But a bag for life is only good if you keep using it. If you use it only once or twice, this is worse than using a flimsy single use petroleum plastic bag. But worse still is one of these things. When you use one of these bags, the only thing that is being properly degraded is you. Thank you for watching, but please do stick around for... There you are. Ask Angus. Where I will be answering your questions directly. So please feel free to drop any questions you have into the comments section and I'll do my best to answer them. But if you care about this stuff, please do share this video and subscribe to my channel. It really does help me in spreading the word and I do appreciate every subscriber, every comment, every share and every like. And so does Gerald. So please don't forget to um, hammer the like button. Coming up next, it's Ask Angus. <laughs> so here we are. We are back with Ask Angus. And uh, over to you, Anthea. Could you please read out the, this week's question? Angus, do you have any thoughts on the Black Lives Matter movement? Oh my God, that is a minefield. The short answer is yes, I do have thoughts on it. And I can't really answer it without giving part of my personal journey that some viewers might find a little bit disturbing. Christ, that sounds worse than it is, I think. Look, I was out on, this, on the streets in 1978 for the Rock Against Racism concert in London with Sham 69, The Clash, amazing. X-Ray Specs, also amazing. Steel Pulse and the Tom Robinson Band. I was only, at the time, just a child really. And, I, and I've lived most of my life dining out on that experience and wearing it as a, I am not a racist badge or, or passport. And I'm not a racist. And here it comes. <laughs> I've always considered myself colour blind, class blind and gender blind. And I still do. People who, who, who know hate that. Colour blind. And I think I'm now one of those people that know. The moment of clarity for me coincided with the Black Lives Matter movement was not necessarily driven by it. It was the film, the 13th Amendment, I think it was called. Anyway, I'm going to put a link to it in the description that I watched around that time. The film was actually made in 2016 and, and watching something that was four years old uh, at that time, it, suddenly the parts of the puzzle started to fit together and I realized that being colorblind is not enough. I, and I really would encourage everybody to watch it, but I will put a link in, in, the, um, in the description. It is USA centric, but this shit is going on all over the place in diff different levels. My takeaway was this. As a white, working class, heterosexual male, and with all the colour blindness in the world, I would still rather go through this world white and heterosexual than I would be being black, gay, or indeed a woman. And there is something seriously wrong with that. Seriously, seriously wrong. I don't personally have any prejudice, and I don't. But it was the realisation that Black Lives Matter was not a movement like Rock Against Racism was, a fight against extreme racism, but a fight against subtle racism, institutional racism. And my preference to live with the advantages of being a white heterosexual male. Until people like me don't feel that anymore, Black Lives Matter is vital. Gay pride is vital. And the feminist movement is vital. I seriously, I don't play lip service to this stuff anymore. I hope that answers your question.